Okay, let me continue the discussion. As you remember from the previous slides, we are trying we are trying to solve the system of equation that can be represented in the matrix notation as ax equal to b. ax equal to b. And for a given matrix A, which is symmetric positive definite, and the right hand side vector B, we want to solve basically for the unknown vector x. According to the previous lecture, we already know after we finish step one, which is the factorization phase, we have already factorized or decomposed the given matrix A in terms of the product of u transpose time u, where u is an upper triangular matrix. So that is exactly what I show you right now in equation 9, which is the same thing as you say u transpose ux equal to b. Well, from equation 9, the product of the matrix u times a vector x we can give it a new name, we call it a vector y. So with that notation y introduced, then equation 9 will become equation 11. And the reason is because you can see u transpose in equation 9 is still in here, and the product of u times x, we call it a vector y in here. And the vector b is still in here. So that is the equation number 11 that I show you over there. In this equation, keep in mind that because the matrix u is an upper triangular matrix, and therefore the transpose of that should be a lower triangular matrix. So for that reason, equation 11, you will see it will be represented in the next slide is this, is equation 12. So u transpose times y is equal to b. u transpose times y is equal to b. And in the more detailed notation, u transpose will be something look like a lower triangular matrix. By looking at equation 12 carefully, we can see that the intermediate vector y can be solved very simple because, for example, if you take a look on the first equation of equation 12, it will say like u11 times y1 plus 0 times y2 plus 0 times y3 equal to b1 based on the first equation. And that is exactly what you have in equation shown as equation 13. So from that equation, u11, y1 equal to b1, we can solve for the unknown y1. And then if you look on the previous slide, if you look this time, if you look at equation, the second equation, it's a u12 times y1 plus u22 times y2 plus 0 times y3 equal to b2. So from that second equation, this is exactly what we got as indicated in equation 14. And from that equation 14, we will be able to solve for the unknown y2. And finally, if you look on the previous slides, and if you look at the third equation or the last equation, it say u13 times y1 plus u23 times y2 plus u33 times y3 is equal to b3. That third equation can be solved for y3 as indicated here by equation 15. By the way, the reason this step, we call it a forward solution. We call it a forward solution in step number two, forward solution. The reason we call that is because in order to solve for the unknown vector y, 
we have to do according to the order, solving for y1 first, then y2, then y3. That's why we call it forward solution. In case your matrix is getting bigger, more than 3 by 3 or 4 by 4, then equation 13, 14, and 15 can be given in the more general form as shown in equation 16, where you can see clearly equation 16 can be solved for any variable unknown yj, where j could be 1, or j could be 2, or j could be 3, and so on, so on. So the value of j could be any value. As a matter of fact, if you let j equal to 3, for example, then equation 16, it will be the same thing as equation 15 for the case of 3 by 3 matrix. So by the end of step 2, which is the so-called forward solution phase, we were able to solve all the intermediate factor y. So now let's move on to step number 3, which is the last step. This step, we call it backward solution phase. And the reason why we call backward solution phase will become very obvious. Now, if you remember, in the previous slides, we already have some statement that say uh, ux equal to y, somewhere on the previous slide, ux equal to y. Let me show you where it is, ux equal to y, ux equal to y. You see? Back in the equation 9, we, at that time, we say the product u times x equal to y is indicated in equation 10. So now, this equation right now, right here, we are looking at it, ux equal to y, okay? So let's look at equation ux equal to y. So we are talking about ux is equal to y. In the long form, that equation I just wrote can be represented by equation 17. And as you can see, U is an upper triangular matrix. That's why all you see is the non-zero in here. Everything below the diagonal is all zero because the upper triangular matrix. The unknown vector x in the long form is represented by the component x1, x2, x3, x4, depending on the size of the matrix. The vector y, which is the intermediate vector, we already know it by the end of step number two. So in this case, how do we solve for the original unknown vector x? If you look clearly in the equation 17, you can see the easiest way will be look at the last equation first. So first look at equation. This is the equation number four. Look at the last equation first. Look at the last equation first. And the last equation say u44 times x4 is equal to y4. So from the last equation, you can see this is what you have. u44 times y4. And then from that, we can solve for the unknown x4. After you solve for the unknown x4, then according to the previous slide, you can look at the next to the last equation, which is equation number three, the third equation. From the third equation, you can see we have zero times x1 plus zero times x2 plus u33 times x3 plus u34 times x4. That is equal to y3 from the third equation. And that is exactly what we have right here, as indicated in equation 19. From that equation 19, because you already know the value of x4, based on equation 18, you already know that. Therefore, you can solve for the unknown x3. And then similarly, you can see the process. After you look at equation 3, then the next thing you will do will be you look at the next equation we look at will be the second equation. And that second equation say 0 times x1 plus u22 x2 plus u23 x3 plus u24 x4 equal to y2. The second equation say. And from that, 
we represent it by equation 20. We can solve for x2. And then finally, if you look at the previous slide, now we can look at the first equation. And the first equation say u11 x1 plus u12 x2 plus u13 x3 plus u14 x4 is equal to y1. And from that first equation, we can solve for x1, which is indicated by equation 21. Now you can see why do we call this phase is a backward solution phase. Why do we call it a backward solution phase? The reason is obvious by now because we saw for the last unknown x4 first, and then you s go back x3, go back to solve for x2, and go back to solve for x1. The order of computation is like that. That's why we call it backward solution phase. What happens if you have a matrix size which is bigger than 3 by 3 or bigger than 4 by 4? Well, the idea is the same. But we are lucky enough that we have some mathematicians already develop a general formula for us. And the formula is given as xj is equal to yj minus summation of uji xi divided by ujj, as indicated in equation 22. So for example, if you look at equation 22, and suppose you assume the index j is equal to uh, 1, then you will get back this equation 21. But if you let the index j equal to 2 in equation 22, then equation 22 will get back this equation right there. So equation 22 is a lot more general equation. It will work for any matrix size. So go through the so-called three step. The first step we call factorization phase in order to figure out the matrix U. The second step is the forward solution phase to find out the intermediate vector Y. And the third step and the last step we call backward solution in order to find out the original unknown vector X. Let me give you a numerical example to demonstrate the idea. Suppose I give you a system of linear equation AX equal to B, where the matrix A